Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What You Say Anime. I am your host, Peter. On today's episode, we got a spicy one for you as we do our mid-season check-in and tell you on our thoughts on what's popping and what we're dropping from the winter 2024 season. Spoiler alert, we will be talking about currently airing shows. So if you want to avoid spoilers, please use the timestamps in the description below. And we will also be talking a little free run and apothecary diaries at the end, so tune in for that. Joining me today on this illustrious boat cruise of anime is my lovely co-host and second mate, Miles. Miles, how's it going? What are your uh, thoughts so far on the season that is? You know, I I am liking the season. One, great intro. Two, Thank you. who's your who's your first mate? I can't tell you. Oh, it's it's going to be a surprise okay. for next episode. Okay, okay. Where we, um, where we bring on our first mate, ladies and gentlemen, behind curtain one. Our our next episode, as in our kids in the slope, kids in the slope, no, or the, the following oh, okay. one. After the that. following one, okay. Yeah. Um, it's, that's called a tease in the business for you. Yeah, no, I. You know what? I'll take second mate. I guess as someone who's maybe been on the podcast once or twice ever comes in and usurps me. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, this person's hotter than you, so they're the first mate now. Oh yeah, I mean, what, what am I like the ninth mate then? Yeah, um, don't get yeah. Sorry, man, you're on the poop deck. <laughs> It happens. This is, I'm the Usopp of the, of the Yes, pirate. you are the Usopp. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've been liking the season. I, I I think my ordering for shows is going to be different than most people's, but maybe it's not. I don't know. You'll have to give me like a community check because you're a lot more tuned in to like the Twitter and everything like that. I will do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, to be honest, I thought this season was going to be kind of mid- uh, just based off the lineup, like our biggest heavy hitter was going to be like soul leveling, which had a lot of hype, but like outside of that, it wasn't going to be a whole lot. So I was like, okay, this season's probably going to be, you know, I'll probably watch like 15 shows, something like that. Probably drop a handful of them. But I've been pleasantly surprised with a lot of these shows. Even like the generic isekai shit that we get has been pretty like fun for the most part. Like nothing that I'm going to rave about, but they're not drop worthy. So I'm happy about that. But yeah, I, I think... I think it's been an okay season, and I think it's probably going to go down as an okay season. But we do have some heavy hitters, and we're going to start with one. And that's solo leveling. And I got I to gotta rant for a second. Because you, okay. Miles, you brought it up. The people, I'm more in tune with the, the Twitters, the other discords, the social media. And people love to hate on solo leveling. They're saying it's basic, it's generic, it's a power fantasy. And guess what? It's all of those, but you know what else it is? <laughs> really good, really fun, and I don't give a shit. It's not trying to hide what it is. It is. It has a very simple premise. It executes it very well, and that's all I need. It's a whole lot of fun. I think Soul Leveling has exceeded my expectations because when I heard about what the premise is going to be, I'm just like, oh, insert fantasy blah 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 it's probably not gonna be anything special but you know uh a1 pictures has done a great job with animating it the production value is very solid the ost the music the score everything about it has been really good there's not like a whole lot i can like nitpick on soul leveling maybe outside of pacing if you see it that way i think it's fine but i have seen complaints about kind of how fast he went from uh getting his powers to like the newest episode uh which was episode six the spider fight yeah. that i don't think we know quick. how it, i'm not sure if like d to c to b to a to if there's s is is linear though you know what i mean so like we'll, we'll have to see how it goes i can definitely see if this pace continues that that could be an issue because like he's going to be the best in like four episodes or something like that um yeah because he they said that they were in like a c rank dungeon yes and he soloed the boss which i think they said something b rankers could do yes. so he's at least like a b or an a rank at the moment if not higher. yeah he, and, and there's different things that could be because he's unique in some ways so there could be things that he has more issue with than others i don't know they, definitely a power fantasy i wouldn't say that it's that it's basic you just you just kind of killed six people like yeah that was not basic <laughs> uh, yeah like 
that that isn't basic in a, a lot of and i know it's like a korean manhwa right so yep. like maybe it is basic for that i'm not as well vor- versed in that as Same. i am on anime and like manga and everything but as far as what we normally like you don't it doesn't happen six episodes in of these power fantasy show you know right like uh what's another sort of power fantasy people show? are c- comparing it to sao essentially that he's kirito without the isekai essentially sure you know what kirito doesn't do kill six humans Agreed. like i wish he did though <laughs> actually he does he does do that later but on like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah, <laughs> you know but it's also view i don't know it's like framed differently and then also like I don't know. The the problem with SAO isn't that it's basic. It's that it's horribly paced a lot of the time and it, the characterization is weird and there's a lot of unnecessary sexual assault in it. Like I don't I don't know. I don't necessarily think that SAO is that generic even though it's sort of like the godfather or yeah. the father or whatever of these isekai. A lot of things that come after it have a much different less serious tone than it. So I guess I agree with that comparison, but I don't know. I think solo leveling's better right so far so yeah so what what are like your thoughts on like because for me what stood out so far has been the production value i really think this ost has been fantastic especially in the fight scenes it adds a lot to it the 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 snake fight in like the subway and then the spider fight in the cave i think those two have been absolute standouts in terms of what i've been looking for in these styles of shows what's your thoughts on that yeah so i i think you know, I'm not going to lie. I was a little disappointed with the production value when this first started. Um, the early episodes, I mean, it's not bad. I'm not going to say it's bad, right? But, um, and this is like pretty A1-y. You know, it's not, it's like very b plusy in my mind. And sure. I feel like there were moments they could have like really knocked it out of the park. However, I think the production value is good. I agree that OST is wonderful. Um, what I've really liked about it is that so far, and I don't know how long this will continue, right? We're pretty early into this, but the encounters that he goes in feel unique to me. There are some that are more like mental puzzles, like that first one they're yep. in, and you know, and then there are other ones where he, you know, is just fighting people and everything. But there are scenarios where you know, like you have to figure out what's going on in the environment and how to do that. And even things as simple as like the order of operations like those people betray that guy like betray him because they don't want to kill the boss because then the thing will close and so you know they want to feed the boss and just so like the fact that it's not a like a game like you know he has the level up system but the world sort of works by like a more natural understanding of it i find very interesting i did yeah that's a good point because something along the lines of the recent episode, I think it was like a C rank dungeon was like, if you've played like a game before, if you're going into like a mid tier dungeon, you kind of know what to expect. Like you're, it's not going to be super hard. You don't have to get all the best gear for this to, in order to do it. It's just going to be, you know, the next level up between it. But in the first episode, we kind of saw what I would assume is sort of like the highest tier on, like they accidentally get into like a highest tier dungeon. And like, you know, there's a lot of these mechanics that you have to do, and if you don't do the mechanics, you fail. It's not just like a tank and spank in terms of MMO. That's and- what I'm saying. Like, I think that that genuinely could have been a C-ranked dungeon, but maybe they're not used to, you know, maybe that type of puzzle is rarer or something sure. like that. You know, so I, don't, I thought that was interesting because all they had to do was kneel down, get into a circle and wait, and they all would have been safe but they didn't know how to solve that problem. And it took real time. Like the first time you go to a boss fight and you're like, okay, this is the new mechanic. We get this extra attempt. They don't have that. Right. So I, I don't know. I like that about it. No, I do too. And it's one of those things where it's like somebody has played a D style of games to like understand adding mechanics into dungeons. And that's something that I look for in these fantasy style, like game shows. It's like why I love log horizon so much. It's like, you know a full party group doing mechanics for on like this giant boss fight that's what you would do in these styles of games this is like the same thing i, I felt like it was a very well designed um so far like world building i guess i would say in terms of du- like dungeons so props to that i'm looking forward to seeing where that goes um did you have any other things that you want to bring up about solo leveling yeah i guess just like really quick there's a few things that i'm looking forward to and some stuff that i'm going to be 
you know, directions I wouldn't like it to go. Not that it would be bad, but just me personally. And, you know, it is called solo leveling, so I'm not sure how much of this I'll get. But I, again, I like the teamwork aspect of it. So I hope he gets to do some of that. I know we're going to get the fights where he just kicks ass because he's the dude and those can be cool. But I still want fights where he has to like work together. They have to think, you know, and it's not just him being like stabby, stab, stab fast, <laughs> yeah. you know. So that that would be cool. And I, I, I have faith because we've seen some of that so far. But sometimes these things do sort of devolve. So I'll be looking out for that. And then two, there's, I think, going to be some political like entry going on the guy he just killed was like do you know who my brother is or something like that yep. you know so I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes because that has potential to be pretty interesting yeah i wonder if it's gonna be like the boys because i think that they mentioned something where it's like there's like a, a core seven who are like the highest thing which is like kind of like what the boys is but like that's very political like those people yes. are like there for specific reasons I don't think it's going to be capitalism like it is in the boys, but yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be a little bit different. So I am intrigued to see the other members because I think we've been introduced to two, maybe three of them. I think three. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm assuming the brother's guy that just died is one of the seven. So, yeah, I would expect something like that, too. Yeah, I, I, I expect some amount of like the boys. But they're not all going to be just giant pieces of yeah. shit. I, I, I suspect there's like the political maneuvering. You know, but none of them are. Yeah, I think awful. that girl character that we introduced seems pretty pure hearted. Like she's yeah. like, like what, what's the, the something good or whatever, the, the D&D thing. What's oh, like the like, purest good person? Lawful, lawful good. She's lawfully good. Yeah, like that's the vibe I'm getting from her. So the only thing she's that probably, I, like, I don't want to see is I think we've kind of got introduced like what the story is going to be. I hope they don't like delve away from it and try to make it something it's not. Maybe like the people who have read it can tell me more but from what i've understand it's like there's not really like a deep story it's just like a lot of just like hype moments and that's kind of what i'm looking for i hope it doesn't like delve away from what makes it like successful uh, yeah. i mean i i agree with that right i want the story to be like oh like maybe i'm getting some pushback because i used to be e-ranked but now i'm good people are looking into why that's happening maybe i get backstabbed by someone but also i fight people and th this person fights people and like, here are my friends and we all fight people, you know, like that's what I hope it does. Yep. Okay, sweet. Uh, so what we normally do in these type of episodes is kind of predict what we think our final rating is going to be towards the end. Normally we do this like three to four episodes in. So it's a little different since we have like six episodes. I think we have a better understanding of where we're going to rate it. But right now I have the show at a nine. I'm probably going to keep it at a nine. I think it's just, I like, it's pure hype, pure fights. It's the same thing with like JJK where like, you know, if you give me what I'm looking for in these like fights and uh, production value things that I'm looking for, I'm going to rate it really high, whether if the story is like poorly paced or whatever, just give me what I'm looking for and I'm going to love it. And so far, I'm loving solo leveling. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's a good score. I have it at an eight. You know, I'm just a little less into this hype stuff than than some people, but it does get me hype. I think if it continues to show like diversity and we get a couple of new you know, interesting fights or scenarios that he's in or that system gets, you know, flushed out a little bit more. I, I could bump it up to a nine, but I think even if it just sort of stays where it's at, I'm, it's still going to be an eight, right? I don't think it could go down really. Okay. Unless they just really screw it up somehow. And I don't know how they do that. Yeah. So. Okay. So do you think you could give this a nine towards the end or you think it's going to be like a solid eight? I think I would. Yeah, I, it's possible. I would say like 75%. I'm at an eight, 25%. Okay. It does stuff to make me give it up to a nine, but like it, it'll be like an eight where I'm like, you know, it's just didn't hit those, those miles notes. Sure. I like to elevate it, but it's still really enjoyable. And I, you know, had a great time watching it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, sweet. We'll move on to our next show. It's a show that miles called on our preview, the seventh time loop, uh, the villain show. I expected coming into this to sort of be stereotypical villainous shows. And it's very different from that because I don't view her as a villainous. However, like we see from her, like her first time that maybe she was a villainous. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but this show has been great. It's been my absolute standout of the season. I've, I've been thoroughly enjoying the dynamic between Rise and uh, Arnold. Rise is probably my favorite character of the season so far. An absolute standout. She's so much fun. I love the the dynamic between her using her previous lives as sort of, you know, everyday life type of thing where her skills as like a doctor, 
and like her second life is being used in this life. Same thing with her being a maid, same thing with her being a warrior and all this stuff. And I like how it's just encapsulated in her seventh time around and just been an absolute treat. Miles, what are your thoughts on the seventh time loop? Yeah, I mean, I'm very much enjoying it so far. I think it also sort of goes to show that if a show has good writing, like the production value stuff can like wane a little bit yeah. and, and it'll carry it right because this is not the world's prettiest show it's like a little uh you, you know the budget shows every once in a while but i don't think it like hurts it really at all it's very interesting i think while i'm very much enjoying it they do have like a lot of intrigue going on and i always get a little worried when you do that because sometimes you just can't pull it together you know 100 yeah, percent. yeah but the ride so far has been really fun. I think the characters are neat. I think they do a good job of like flashing back, going forward, showing where she's learned these lessons. Her using the skills and in like ways that are relevant to her applicable role and stuff too, you know, where you know, she pretends to be the maids and stuff. Like she's not trying to be a maid, but it's her way of like gaining intel and everything in this like current life she's she's lived i think it would also be interesting to like if we could see in flashbacks like the stacking of that you know what i mean like oh it was a merchant in my first life and this is how this helped me be a soldier or whatever uh could be interesting too but i i mean i i'm really liking it i i i'm excited to see what happens i'm excited to see if there's ever gonna be like an eighth time loop you know what i mean because like that possibility is always there I don't expect it, but it it does. I think that's enough to keep you on your toes, you know. Well, I th- this is, like every time that she's had the loop, it's because the war happened, and then she dies like after the war. I think it's like fifteen years. It's usually like ten to fifteen years after she gets rejected from the first prince from the first episode. Yes. So it's like always in that same time frame. So right now, I mean, we're only like a a few months maybe after that part in their seventh life yeah. so like it's like i i feel like like that's not really in the distance but you did bring up something that i think that would draw a lot of people away from it especially after i think like the first couple episodes were like really good like it got people invested into the show really fast and then we started our getting like i think it's episode four with like the trading we're like now we're getting to like spice and wolf territory we're like are you a fan of economics? Are you a fan of bartering? Are you a fan of like <laughs> these types of dialogues? Because a lot of people don't like Spice and Wolf for that exact reason. And, th- and as soon as that episode aired, I'm like, oh, this is Spice and Wolf. Like, I love it personally. I'm a big fan <laughs> of that. So like I was digging into it, but like I think that could draw people away from it. Did that do anything to you when you saw like those type of scenes? I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know why I didn't like Spice and Wolf. I didn't like Spice and Wolf. I think I was just not feeling it that month where we watched them like back to back or whatever. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. we did do that. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I don't know. I, I think this is interesting because to me, this world's like a little more fleshed out than the Spice and Wolf world. I know people really like the Spice and Wolf world building, but I never found it to be that great. Like all the towns felt the same to me, but here the different factions seem to really separate themselves from each other. You know, like you could tell the merchants are different than the Royals. There are differences between the two uh, kingdoms and stuff. She comments on them, you know, so I think that sort of helps. And then also she's just very charismatic, yep. right? Like, I think that, that that's good. Not that Hollow isn't, but I like Risha more. That's fair. No, I, I definitely get that. I also want to give a shout out that the author for this show is, like, super active on Twitter. And will, like, if you have questions about the series, if you, if you like, message, the, I'd say message, but, like, at them in a tweet she'll like respond to you she liked my tweet i was like this is so cool i didn't even that is at, super I didn't, cool i didn't even at her like she just <laughs> liked my tweet because i don't know i they she says like if you put like a blue butterfly that's like the symbol of the show in your mm-hmm. tweet she looks for those and she'll like comment and like it so it, shout out to the author of the show she liked my tweet i really appreciate it that was fun um, that's really cool trying to think of just like anything that it, i, I kind of hope I, like I like this middle part that we've gotten so far, but I do kind of yep. hope it goes back into like the first part, which made it fun. Where it's not Riche like sitting around the castle; it's more of like her putting her previous experience into work. 
w- whether that's like helping out like the city with like no- her knowledge of medicine and stuff like that we already got like a little bit of it with like the trading but th- there's so much di- like so much to dive into from her previous life so i want to see that be put into into use and that's what i'm hoping for that we get in the next couple episodes I mean, I suspect we will, right? So, like, you had a little bit that was about her experience as a maid. You're going to get some that's going to be about her experience as a merchant, you know, and then the soldier and all the other jobs, I imagine, will pop up at some point. You know, I don't know how planned out it is, so maybe it'll take a little while, but I do expect that we'll get there, you know, because there's already been some interactions with her that sort of shows her her prowess as, like, a warrior and everything, even though Arnold is, like a like, a stronger one. You know, he's still impressed with her daring and all of that. Mm-hmm. So, Yep, for sure. Uh, do you have any final thoughts on Seventh Time Loop? No, I mean, I very much enjoy it. I'm excited. I, I, the villainous thing has me paranoid because what I found is like villainous doesn't even often mean like villainous. Yeah. Like as we would say it in it's English very in these shows. Used. It, yeah, it feels like it's usually just like a rich noble lady that some people think are kind is like sort of a jerk. Yeah. So like. I she mean, laughs it, like it, this. It, it, oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah, exactly. Like usually the best character in the show. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and you know, so I'm I'm curious to see one if we get more into her first loop, like her first life, because that is pretty mysterious currently. And I just sort of want to see where that comes in because I I don't think you would have had to name it villainous unless it was just a marketing thing, which is possible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, without some reason for sure. So right now I have to show it like an 8.5 ish I, on Mal. I have it at a nine. I think it's good enough to be a nine, but I, I'm having a blast. I think by the end of the season, I think it'll fluctuate between eight and nine, depending on where the story goes. If it's more like the first half, it's probably gonna be like a nine. If it's more like the second, the, the episodes four, five, six, it's probably gonna be an eight, but thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, Rishay's, you know, she's going to be like best girl of the year worthy. So like I, I'm having a blast with this cast So That's where I'm sitting. Yeah, I'm also at like an eight, nine. It'll just depend, uh, like you said, how I see things coming together. Is everything independent or do we get to intertwine stuff? And, you know, to me, that's going to be the difference between this is a very good show and like, wow, the show is great, you yeah. know? But it, I think it's definitely laying the work where it could get up to that nine level. Um, and we'll just have to to see how it executes. For sure. All right. So that's seventh time loop. Moving on to our next show a show that I've been waiting for forever. The adaptation has been absolutely fantastic. That is a sign of affection. Everything about this so far has been wonderful. It's been funny. It's been heartwarming. I really like the attention to the detail with the signing. I think like getting diving more deep into sort of the, the guidebook that Yuki made for Itsumi was like a really nice touch because in the manga it's shown, but it's not really like showcased. I thought they did a really good job at like, it's kind of like, paneling over a bunch of words and really showing the attention to detail with this um so far right now we are six episodes in and we're sort of seeing yuki and itsumi being like official couple so just been wonderful for the record we are a fuck oshi podcast uh oshi is worst boy he's a jerk he's a bully i hope that he gets a C on his math exam. Miles, what are your thoughts on a sign of affection? So I want to preface this by saying I enjoy a sign of affection. I do. It's it's good. I like it. I don't I don't think I get it. I Damn. I, yeah. Damn. Like, I, <laughs> I I was like watching it today and like I'm very I'm very like this is this is fine. You know, I, I don't know if this is going to be crazy. Maybe this is crazy. I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Let's talk me right. down. Like, okay. One eats me, right? Riz everywhere. I get, I get that. I get eats me. I don't really think he has a lot of chemistry with Yuki. Okay. I think Yuki is a little too, like he kissed her hand and she fainted. It's just a little too. It's too much for me. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, girl, hold it together. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is probably like her first boyfriend. You got, you gotta remember that. Yeah, ever, lots and of people like have a first hot, boyfriend. Yeah, but like, is your first boyfriend the hottest dude in college? I mean, whoever my first girlfriend, uh, right? She, 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 hers was. So, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, 
I love that take. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk you down. Miles, you're hot, but you ain't that hot, my man. <laughs> That's fair. I just, I don't really get them as a couple. Okay. I feel like she likes Itsumi because he's super fucking hot. Yep. And honestly, fair enough. He <laughs> Girl, is. same. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but I guess that's not like the most compelling reason to me. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But the way that people spoke about this, I was expecting to be like blown away by this anime. I th- yeah. And I, yeah. I know where you're coming from with that because I think we definitely get those moments later down the road. I okay. feel like as an anime watcher, especially with romance, we're so accustomed to the high school chase trope where it's very rare where we get like an established couple outside of like something like Hori Mia, where like the first season is like purely designed for building the chemistry, building the rapport of this couple. And then maybe like season three, they'll be an actual couple. I think with like a sign of affection, with each me being, I think he's 21 or 22. Yeah. And Yuki's like 19 or 20 where we don't really need, at least this is my personal opinion with, especially in like real life now where like, you don't need the 12 episode rapport building when two people uh, like lock eyes with each other and be like, Hey, maybe we should give this a shot. And like, that's what I like about a sign of affection because to me, it reminds me of something like, you know, like online dating or something like that, where like you're tr- purely basing somebody off like their looks and sort of like what their interests are. And then you immediately like jump into like dates and stuff like that, where it's not building the rapport as much as we've seen before. And that's kind of what I like, where it's just like two people just like looking at each other and be like, you want to give this a shot? And like, yeah, let's give it a shot. And that's what I really like about it. And I think your complaints are valid. Maybe we get them addressed in the anime. I don't think we'll get to that point. But there's some really awesome moments in the manga that stand out to me that like okay. literally to the point where like I haven't seen other anime or manga really do what it does. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that. But I think your complaints are valid. But to yeah. me, it's more like I think like the dialogue is super fun, not just between them, but between like Yuki and Rin. I think like their dialogue is super fun. Uh, Rin, Rin and um, uh, what's the other Itsumi's uh boss or whatever at the Rock and Robin place? Like, yes, like them too. The the Shin and Emma thing is also kind of like a nice like side thing where it can distract us a little bit from the main story and. You know, Emma's ties to eats me, you know, it's always yeah. nice, a nice little drama. So, yeah. OK, I think you've helped me contextualize why it's not super hitting for me for romances. What I like, what I need in my romance is that main couple to be the star. I need that. Right. Like, sure. And I like I like me my some of my side couples and stuff. But like this was a complaint I had with Wodakoi, for example. Right. To me, I was just more invested in what was going around the main couple than the main couple themselves. And I think that might be the case here, too. To me, it just seems like, okay, Yuki, because I just want to say Yuki isn't doing the, oh, I'm attracted to you. Let's try to date thing. Yuki is like, I am in love with this man. Yeah. She's like a little, it's just a little bit much for me. And I get she's sheltered and everything, but like. It, I, I don't care. It's just too much for me. But, you know, what's up with Emma and Itsumi? Oshi, how did, why is he so shitty? Why is he the worst <laughs> fucking person on earth? You know, why did he learn sign language to bully someone? Something has to happen to a human, you know, for that. And then, like, I'm interested to see, because he's going to figure out that he loves Yuki and that he really fucked up and he's going to try to make up for that in some way. And he's going to try to paint Itsumi in a bad light. These, I mean, I don't know that this happens, but this is what I'm expecting. And I'm interested in that, those interactions. And I'm interested in them enough because I think Yuki and Itsumi are a good enough couple where, like, I care if something tries to disrupt them. But they aren't... They just don't, I just don't feel the chemistry between them. I think Itsumi likes Yuki because of how she sees the world and everything. 
which I think is fine. And I think Yuki likes Itsumi because he's literally just the hottest dude ever. He's like, I go around everywhere. I fucking travel. I'm super hot and smart and the best. I speak five languages. Oh, you speak sign language? I'm learning that. <laughs> That's great. You know, like, I date Itsumi. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I, I do. I think it's like, you know, like you said, she's sheltered and he's like the exact opposite of sheltered. <laughs> Where it, you know, opposites attract, like she wants to explore the world. Like she is looking for like a guide in life for that. And it just happens to be the hottest person in the world. And so I don't blame her for being head over heels for this dude because any sane human being would, you know, like he probably has money. He goes backpacking, which is super cool and travels the world. Like this is, it, it all lines up to me to be something great but i also something that is i think you like and a lot of people like but this show kind of pushes away from it it's like the third like the the third party the the other romantic threat we're like oh she is shot down so fast it is made so abundantly clear that he has no chance that the drama of like a potential you know childhood friend trope is just negated it, it it's gone yeah. so fast from the show where it's like well it, yeah emma is shot down super fast too yes, right and emma, like yeah. to the point where each like kind of mean to her well, like and his I know, defense, I, I, like I, I, yeah she's, i would she's, be pissed too yeah i know i understand but he's like you know he's basically like uh yeah i'm taking my key back also go kill yourself <laughs> <laughs> maybe not that far but i know i mean it was just pretty harsh well she but, did something yeah. really harsh to yuki just yuki couldn't hear it yeah, I mean, she was just being petty, right? Yeah, like yeah, it's I mean, mean. She, she, it's not, it's not that mean. It's very mean. We have very, what? very yes, it's so mean. Are she, we talking about when she was like, the "Thanks key, for letting me stay yeah, over"? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Yuki could hear it, and like she's trying to set it up or like painting Itsumi in a bad light, but Yuki didn't she, hear no, it. That's so. not no. You're taking that too. She was trying to put herself as in she had the territory. That's what she was trying to do. Yeah, she, she was. That's, that's not painting <laughs> eats me in a bad light. Yeah, I don't know if it's mean. Well, it, it's it, makes like, it, it makes it seem like eats me is like two timing. Be like, like sh- Emma was like insinuating that like they slept together. Like, thanks for letting me stay the night or whatever. Like to me, that implies like she was trying to make it seem like yeah, she Itsumi. absolutely was doing that that's because mean. she thought Yuki was a <laughs> that's threat. That's very I, mean. I don't. I guess mean. I, I'm not saying it's a good thing. It's a bad thing it to is. do. <laughs> but to me, I don't think it's. I don't think it's mean. I think okay. it's more like petty and insecure the girls in our <laughs> discord will have to let us know because i find that very mean and i wonder if they would see it as whatever like they do okay yeah i, I don't know we agree that it's not a good look right uh, like yeah. that's, <laughs> but okay the, the one thing that you're missing though miles from the show is they went to costco like <laughs> however they did not buy a 4.99 rotisserie chicken which is blasphemy but they did get a deli pizza so Yes, they almost they almost checked every Costco checkbox, but you gotta get the four ninety nine rotisserie chicken. That's like a staple. The CEO yeah. literally said he'd kill somebody if they changed the price <laughs> of the rotisserie chicken. So, uh, rare L for a sign of affection on the Costco date. But outside of that, I've been thoroughly enjoying this adaptation. I still like the manga better. Um, I think it's a little better pace than the manga. But okay. it's been great. Right now, I have it at an eight. I'll probably end up at a nine just because I know what's coming. Okay. But I think so far, it's been really nice. Also, I gotta say, the color palette that they use for this show is it's perfect. It's yeah. so light and just like the like the light pink and like so many things to me just like radiates the vibe that this show is saying. So shout out to that. Yeah. So my I'm guessing I'm gonna give the show a nine by the end of it. But right now, I have it at an eight. Yeah, so right now I think I have it at like a seven, but like a high seven. I could see it being an eight. What I what I need to see is maybe it's just because the way that I express love to people like it, it is more akin to bullying them than Yuki is capable of doing. Why I don't, don't, you I, I don't show me any love. You always I, I, bully me. That's me showing you love. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, but like with my wife and i like you know like i tease her a lot we joke around a lot Mm -hmm. um it just sort of have like a good time it and i just don't get any of that energy from yuki needs me and that sort of hinders my enjoyment i think like you see that in horamiya right they have that 
relation, that back and forth yep. that I think is really important. And I, I just don't see Yuki having a back and forth with anyone. It's a little ever. difficult given her circumstances. <sighs> Fair enough. I mean, I don't know. You could be snarky over text. Like, she was snarky <laughs> with Oshi when they were doing like their little exchange in like episode like three, where he's like, where are you going at this time of night? Are you going to see him? And she's like, fuck off. <laughs> like essentially that's what yeah, she did. Yeah. And maybe yeah, that's probably why some people are team Oshi, you know, because there's some passion there. The wrong type of passion. Put that, put that passion somewhere else. <laughs> that dude, this dude needs to get a life. Any final thoughts on Simon Faction before we move on? I, I'm excited to keep watching it. I, I mean, people love it, right? So, like, I expect that it'll, it'll come around. And maybe it's just not my favorite thing in the world, and that'll be okay. But I think it's a very good anime. Like, it's, it's made well and everything, and it's got a lot of doki doki moments, which are nice. For sure. So. Okay, so that's sign of affection. Moving on to our next show, The Witch and the Beast. I gotta give a a disclaimer warning. Uh, Cosette, if you're listening, I'm sorry. Uh, Stony, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry. This show sucks. Like, I I was so enamored with the first episode. I thought it set a really nice tone outside of them arriving and then finding the person that they need immediately as soon as they step out of the train. And I was like, okay, outside that, like, the witches and stuff that they're cool and um, sort of like what Godot is like looking for. Like, okay, I kind of get the story. And so the first episode I thought was like pretty, pretty good. And then we got to like episode three with the police mom losing her two sons. And then the two sons are actually alive and they never really saw their adopted mom at a, as a mom, but as a woman. I was like, that's a really fucking weird thing to say to your adopted mom. And like, it made me play it in like a different light. And I, I just can't get on board with like anything this show is doing. The only reason why I haven't dropped it is Godot is so cool. I love her design. I love her attitude. I love everything about her, but I'm gonna keep it a bean with you. This show is not good. Like straight up. Not, I'm not having, I'm straight up not having a good time. Miles, what are your thoughts so far on the witch and the beast? Pete, terrible take, man. The show. It's fucking fire. Um, you like by, that police episode? So here's the thing. I saw the clips, like the manga clipping or whatever, and I saw the line. And maybe this is like an expectations thing. And I was like, what a fucking crazy line for anyone to ever write down. Um, she fucking puts a bullet in their head. Yeah, which was also seconds, weird. Which is amazing. That's so good. That's so dumb. That's so <laughs> great. Oh, my God. These are your adopted sons that you like put your heart into like raising them as your own and it's just like oh i haven't seen you i thought you're dead oh you're alive oh i guess i'll just kill you now pete they murdered dozens of people yeah but they didn't murder her they're pete, still it's, just, it's like you're they're your kids when you shoot i'm not gonna say that but like <laughs> um i just Look. i just i thought i thought the whole scene was ridiculous cooper it, if you're if you're watching this i didn't want to bring up cooper. Many years <laughs> okay i love you buddy and maybe I won't shoot you, but if you kill unironically dozens of people, I'm turning you in. I am. You're turning I'm sorry, them in. Pal. Yeah. You're not shooting them. I don't own a gun. But if you did. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> if, he, if he killed a bunch of people and then was like, I want to fuck my mom. Yeah, I think I'd fucking shoot him. I just. <laughs> it's, it's so. It's just so. It took me out of the show. So fa- it felt. So, I, it felt. So, I loved uh, it. Okay. I thought it was good. I, I I genuinely did because I think it shows. I think it shows like the brutality of the world, right? Like, it, it, because you have these kids who were like in this tough position, who were like adopted and who were incapable of ever actually drawing that like familial relationship because of like the scenario like that this world in like we live in a fucked up world in this show right like what did you think about episodes four and five uh so when we got introduced to fenora Fenora's it, awesome by yeah the way. she's cool it brought me a little bit back into it but like my thing is just like caring for like what's happening like that that's my problem i got so taken out of the story from episode three where it's going to take a, a lot to get back into me caring for what's happening. 
And like right now, like I just don't care. I need something to draw me back in. And that's where I'm sitting right now. Like interesting. Okay. F- Fenora's cool. Godot's the goat. But like Ashoff, like I, I'm not like I, he has like a really cool design, but like I don't care about his character. Like that that's my biggest thing right now. Okay. See, to me to me, one, I think the world building is really cool. Like the way that it's sort of like this Venetian society, mm-hmm. the way that they they have like pretty well thought out like magic rule systems and stuff. I do wonder why Godot doesn't just fall in love with someone and kiss him. But like that's neither here nor there. She's too filled like, with rage or something. <laughs> yeah, it feels like the way easier way to break the witch's curse, but alas. You know, like, I think, like, the script on, like, the arms of the sorcerers is super cool. That is cool. Um, I really full medals I beat. Yeah, so, like, and I, you know, I liked the explanation of, like, how necromancy works and why it's so sinful. Mm-hmm. And, like, the individual stories to me are pretty interesting. Like, I was pretty into that Fenora story. I thought Johan was really cool. Like, I knew he was, like, undead, like, pretty immediately. But, yeah. like, the payoff on that was pretty, pretty neat. And I, I, I like the vibe to me is also just so good. Like I love witches, right? I love you do. that sort of like, yeah, like 18th century sort of thing. And I think that there's a lot of care put into the world. I'm not going to say that like those two kids weren't weird, right? Like they definitely were, but I also think that the world that they're in is weird and sort of dark and like, I'm not going to say it's the world's most elegant exploration of any of that, but to me, it's in it. They didn't really like take me out because one, that story's done. We don't need to worry about it anymore. That's true. And that's true. <laughs> yeah. I and hope. then like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like she could be like, come back. Fenora, Fenora brings them back. <laughs> no, not the kids, but like the, the police lady. I feel like she could wind up back in the story somehow. Oh, I mean, she might, I, but I didn't mind the police lady. Like, I, cause I, I think killing the kids was just generally correct. I, I, I think this is where like, if you like the show, you didn't have a problem with episode three. If you don't like the show, you probably had an episode with with episode three. And I think that's like our parallel where that that's to me where that was like the it moment. And not connecting with that scenario, I think is gonna put off people. But it's like for you, someone like you, it's not an issue at all. So I th- yeah, I, yeah i guess i'm just expecting like dark things to happen you know what i mean like that dude's wife got resurrected her soul was destroyed for all eternity and then immediately murdered in front of him like there's just a lot of stuff and i'm not gonna like you're right it's like a little edgy and stuff but i guess that's what i'm expecting going into the like from episode one of course it's gonna be ed- like that yeah w- which mutilated all of our students and stuff it was mm-hmm. like i'm harboring a grudge from 300 years ago <laughs> like, yeah, it's like get over it lady <laughs> i know i i've i've very much been enjoying this and to me i think it's because it's, it's pretty the character like godot i think is a lot of fun i like ashaf like i think his demeanor is sort of just the cool calm and collected you know always smoking a cigarette that is like cool. You know, I have 10 aces up my sleeve. It really doesn't matter what you do. I'm just going to be here chilling out. And once you're done doing whatever you're doing, I'm going to show you what's up. Is I, I think neat. And also, everyone is so hot. They are. Every- it's too, they're too hot. <laughs> they're too hot. Okay. Yeah. You, I, you, need some, you need like one or two people to stand out, not like the entire cast. I I mean, so, you I'm know, kidding. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm pro everyone being hot. Uh, <laughs> Miles thinks the Necromancer is the hottest character. That I do. I absolutely <laughs> do. Um, Those deadpan yeah. eyes, literally. I, I think Fenora is probably the hottest character in my estimation. Good pick. Um, yeah. And then Godot. And then everyone else, yeah. because they're all pretty hot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. You know, Cosette, Stoney, I got you. I like it. Um, I'm going to keep watching it. I will say animation and stuff is like a little eh. Yeah, um, I think the production is <laughs> pretty bad on the show. It, it, it's not great. Uh, so they, I will say they put some effort into like the fights and stuff. Yeah, but it, it's not great. So I think if you're into this, it's because of the atmosphere and the characters attitudes and mm-hmm. stuff. Mostly is what I would I would guess. What are you sitting at right now as a rating? I have this at an eight right now. Damn. Yeah. 
Okay. I have this at a low five. Um, Ooh, it was, God, a, it, it, it was it, a four. <laughs> it was a four. <laughs> episode three really did a number on you. Huh? I, unironically might be the worst episode of the year. Like, <laughs> like if I do like a, like a worst episode list of the entire year, that's going to be an absolute front runner. I hated it. I dropped the show from a seven to a four. That's that crazy. Episode. I did not like it at, at all. I did not like the dialogue. I did not like the twist. I did not like the message. I did not like the theming. All of that was just to me was just really poorly done. Um, not a fan. <laughs> what was the message? Uh, don't adopt kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Adopt kids. Uh, shout out to my uh, two adopted cousins. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like it sort of fits the tone. But I will say the tone is edgy, right? Like yep. it definitely is. So, you know, it, uh, I don't blame you for not liking it. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so that's that. That's the Witch and the Beast. Moving on to Miles' favorite show. Hokkaido Gals are super adorable. A show that he started today. I, I guess I'll start since I, I think you haven't seen every episode, right? I have not. Okay, so I, I'm caught up on it. Uh, to me, this is Dress Up Darling Light. It is it's silly and fun with like the cute girls doing whatever, you know, like the really hot gal. One of them is like essentially like an ota- a game otaku. Like she's super into Smash Brothers and other stuff like that. So like that's kind of like fun, I guess. Um Fuki is like a very gal gal. She's a gal's gal. Uh everything about her is a gal's gal. The main character, Subasa, is pretty generic, I would say. I guess he has longer hair than normal MCs, and I think it's brown instead of black, so he's got that going for you. Um, the third girl, Reyna, I don't think we've been introduced to her yet. Uh, I think that's coming up, but so far this show has just been like, it's just been fun. Uh, it's pretty much what I'm looking looking to get into. The manga is like pretty etchy. I've seen some panels, and they toned <laughs> it down a lot in the anime, so I'm a huge fan of that. I think we're getting like one thing per episode, really. Like, you know, like Fuki taking a bath. Like, there was that. I don't, I don't know if you got to that scene. Sayori, like, she's sweaty. And so, like, <laughs> Tsubasa sees her, like, unsweating herself or whatever, like, drying herself. So, and then she's, like, in her bra and stuff. So it's like, we have, like, minor etchy mods, but, like, so do we did that with, like, Dress Up Darling, too, where. You know, if the show is fun, I can kind of overlook it as long as it's not like overly etchy. Where at yeah. some points it was, but not too bad. And that's kind of what I'm getting with this. It's been pretty fun so far. However, uh, well, I'm actually glad that Mal does this. Like, it straight up says it's a romantic subtext. It's not like a romance. So I'm not really expecting a whole lot of development in that sense. I just hope like the show is fun. And so far, the show has been fun. Miles, your thoughts on Hokkaido Gals? Yeah, I, I think it. I think it's fun. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be continuing this, not because it's like offensive to me or anything, but it's just I, I don't know if it's exactly my vibe. For sure. Um, what I what I liked was that Mina Me was interested in the MC because he was like from like the city, and you know she's clearly into like fashion and culture and mm-hmm. stuff, and you know he has more access to that than she's ever had being from way up north. So to me, that was believable enough. You know, not that he's like the world's most exciting character or anything, but I, I don't know. It was a little, it, there was some effort explaining that, which I, which I thought was good. It, it, it's what you expect it to be. I sort of, you know, feel like, you know, like, oh, they w- watch a movie. There was that weird scene in episode one with the foot where she was like rubbing and then like moaning in her sleep yeah. or something. So we, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I mean, we'll see. I'm gonna, you know, I'll, I'll probably watch a couple more episodes. See, see what I think because I did like dress up, darling. What episode are you on? Uh three, I believe. Okay, so have you been introduced to girl two? No, I okay. think she gets introduced in three. Yes. So, okay. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested if you. I mean, okay. I, I, I don't think it's gonna change your mind or anything like that. But <laughs> okay. I think that this is if you had to pick a best girl, I'm leaning it's going to be the next one. Okay, so I mean, then I'll at least do that, right? Because like, I don't know, I'm weird sometimes, right? Like, I love the quintessential quintuplets, so like, it's not impossible for me to 
to like something like this sure uh um, no, but I, he, he lives in Hokkaido where it's snowy and not riding a motorcycle so it's a little different <laughs> it's so true i <laughs> um i fudero gang rise up yeah um and yeah so yeah I, I guess i don't have like a lot to add to this uh i think my impression from the two episodes i've seen are what you've said and it sounds like that's what that is yep so yeah, so if, if this show continues to be fun and, like, silly and whatever, it's probably going to be, like, a six or a seven for me. Like, th- it, it's not going to do anything special. Just keep it lighthearted and fun. One thing that has it going for me, at least for me, is that it airs on Mondays, and I have no other show on Monday. So, like, that's, like, a huge plus. It's not on, If this was on Saturday, I don't even know if I'd be watching this show. But... <laughs> That's what that's what it has going for me. So I'm in like the six you, or seven range. You could take some of the Saturday shows and move them to Monday. I move them to Sunday. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably be in the six and seven range too. But like, also, I I think I drop sixes at a much higher clip than you do. Yep. Um, because like, unless a six is doing something. Like, if I just know it's going to be a six and I don't have hope or whatever, or people haven't talked it up, I'll probably just drop it. For sure. So. Okay, well, well, we'll see if Miles changes his mind after Girl Number 2 gets introduced or if he's dropping it. So that is Hokkaido Gals. Moving on to our next show. This is what I like to call in the business Peak Fiction. Uh, it's called Fluffy Paradise. We're all, be, we're all buttheads on this one. I think the show is great. I, I like the concept that she, search, she essentially is like in this world to sort of advise if like humans should live or not. But at the same time, she's just petting really cute animals. And sometimes it's uh, dragons. Sometimes it's befriending goblins. And that whole aspect, I think it's just silly and fun and unique. It's I watched episode one like three times. I thought it was super fun. And hot take, this ED is so gas. It's, well, okay. Everyone thinks it's gas, don't they? I, this is how gas I think it is to the point where the ED wasn't on YouTube. So I recorded my screen and then uploaded it to YouTube. <laughs> okay. That, that's too much effort. <laughs> I, I love the ED. It's super fun. It's called like happy party or something like that. And that's exactly what the show is. It's just a big old fluffy, happy party. And that's what I'm looking for. Miles, it's f- give me your thoughts party. on uh, fluffy paradise before I stab you. Okay. A few things. Dragons aren't fluffy. <laughs> But other not, other animals are. Sure. I Okay, so I've only watched two episodes of this show. Okay. And I, I don't think I'm gonna be watching any more episodes. Understandable. Of this show. <laughs> uh, my here are my issues with this show. One, you know, I've said a number of times how I don't really care about like production budget. These people are so stiff. I mean, it bothers me. That's how low the production value is. Except for when she's like jumping onto the tiger or whatever. But there was this one scene where she was like holding on the tiger's tail and it was just like up in the air and the, like the movement. I don't know. I mean, it was such a minor nitpick, but for whatever reason, it like caught out to me too. There's like a lot of very strange political drama going on. There is a lot. I think that, it, it, I saw a lot so, of people were like taken aback by it, but I thought like the first episode kind of like set that a little bit. But oh, also, yeah, I, but also it's called yeah. Fluffy Paradise, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I, you know, the first episode sets it right. She meets like some important political players. Her sister is taking some tests to become, you know, someone who's more like her coming of age mage mm-hmm. test or whatever. You know, they have all of this stuff going on, but like. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of bad. I just don't think it's like we have a lot of good political intrigue stuff going on with like Seventh Time Loop and Apothecary Diaries and everything. And this is like, here's the priest. The priest is evil. And then she's like, maybe I shouldn't judge the priest. And then the priest is like, I'm evil. And then everyone's <laughs> like, oh, uh, you're evil. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> you know, so like, I don't know. It was, you know, it's like, oh, she she got the dragon orb and then she did yeah and then everyone's like that's really important but we we don't know why (laughs) so i'm I'm sure we learn at some point but it's not like i feel like that's not something like you have to like like you should just tell us why that's important like i don't know Um, the dragon he's chilling why does everyone else care about it it's a dragon 
Okay. Okay. So they don't tell us. The dragons are <laughs> just... super powerful. Okay. I don't know. Um, okay. I'm bullshitting right now. And then I don't know. Like, I just, I don't get the, you know how some people see puppies and are like, oh my God, puppies. Yeah. I'm just sort of like, oh, puppies, those are neat. You know, same with like kittens or whatever. So I just don't get the, uh, the doki doki feeling when there's like a big tiger to jump. I gotcha. Into. It, just doesn't, it doesn't hit for me. The serotonin isn't pumping. Yeah. So, but what what about this makes your serotonin pump? Uh, the exact opposite. Like how it doesn't hit for you, it hits for me. Okay. Oh okay. man, big big fan of cute animals doing cute things. Uh, it might surpass cute girls doing cute things. I don't know. I just think Nefertima is just like really fun. And I'm just having a blast with it. Like I, I'm a big slice of life guy, and when we have like slice of life elements like this, it's it's fun. It, it, this the show isn't deep. There isn't some like underlying message where I'm connected to it. It's just like she pets you- cute animals. I like cute animals. No, I think I think there is. I think there's like a like a political message. In there this. is, but like I'm not watching Fluffy Paradise for that. I'm watching Fluffy Paradise. Pete, it's been like half the runtime of it. Yeah, but like she's still, even with the political undertone of the story, she's still meeting cute goblins. She's petting cute dinosaurs. She's petting cute bunnies. She has a owl pet that's super, you know, cheap, cheap. Like, come on, man. Like, how am I not selling you on this? (laughs) I, because because I'm a hater. Uh, No, it's, this show is not for everybody. It's but it's for me. Like this is this is a Pete show. Like I okay. I love it. Yeah, I, yeah. It, it it for sure it for sure is a Pete show. Mm. So you dropped uh, it, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna watch. The okay, rest of this. I haven't had eight. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where we're at right now. I I think it's really fun. Um, also like Hokkaido Gals, it helps that it airs on Sunday. The only two shows I really watch on Sunday are Seventh Loop and Fluffy Paradise. Okay. So it helps a lot with that. So. I don't think we have to dive too much more into Fluffy Paradise, but if you like Pete shows, I would say watch it. If you like Miles shows, I don't know. Be a bully somewhere else. <laughs> Just kidding, Fair Miles. Enough. Aren't you? All right, our last new show of the season that we're going to be talking about is Trigger's production of Delicious and Dungeon. And so far, I've been... I think each episode is just getting better and better. I, I, I do think... I understand some of the points people are saying with like the, like the first two episodes. Uh, with sort of like how it's paced and sort of like the characters and who they are and like the world that they're in but i think each episode has just been getting so much better with like the dynamics between like what they're trying to eat and how they eat it and how they prepare it and sort of their adventure the newest episode with the paintings and trying to like eat inside of the paintings was like super fun i love that concept of like like a super mario 64 where we like jump into the paintings and stuff like that I thought like that concept was like really fun. And then like the treasure monsters were really cool. And like how they cook and prepare that has just been like really enjoyable. And like, I like how unique the meals are and how unique these characters are as well. Like Laos is just, I don't, I don't know what word to describe him, but it's sort of like when you discover a new fetish and you just get obsessed with it. And we're like something it's, it's the community meme where he's like, this better not awaken something in me. <laughs> and then something did awaken in him where he is like, he views Senshi as like his role model of like how, as soon as he sees something, he looks at Senshi. It's like, how can we prepare this meal? How can we prepare this dungeon monster? Like, that's what he looks for. And it's just like, it was never done before prior to like meeting Senshi and venturing into the dungeon. And I, I, I love it. I, I just think it's so much fun that with what they're doing and the cast of Marcel and Chilchuk, Chilchuk got a lot of new shine in this newest episode with him defeating the, um, the mimic. And I thought that was like a really fun. And this is also one of the, I think it's like the second episode where I think trigger really shined in terms of um, how they animate their shots. So I just been a big fan so far. and. I don't know. There's really not a whole lot to like knock on it. Miles, what are your thoughts so far on Dungeon Meshi? Yeah, so I'm five episodes in. Kayla and I are watching it together, but we're also watching a bunch of other shows and stuff together. So a little bit behind, but I've watched a good amount. And, you know, I, this is another thing. I think I'm just a little lower on this show. For me, everything is a little samey every episode. It's like, 
you know, they're they're going on their adventure, and then Marcel's like, okay, we have to be careful because Monster is over there. And then Bass is like, Monster? We could eat the monster. Yes. And then since she's like, oh, I've been eating that monster since 1942. Uh, <laughs> let me go get my supplies specifically to eat this monster. And then the rogue guy is like, I'm angry sometimes. <laughs> and then they cook it. Or they like, they fight it, and then they cook it, and then Marcel's like, I'll never eat this. Oh, this is actually pretty good. And then Laos comes everywhere. Um, he does come a lot. <laughs> um, you know, and I like that episode. Like, I like it. But it's been every episode. Sure. It's, it's just, you know, like, he doesn't seem very concerned about the fact that his sister is slowly digesting in the belly of a dragon. I would, I think I would be a little more concerned. I don't know. I, you know, that's my concern. Like, since she is fun, I like him. He has that fun mentor role and everything. But to me, it's just very, it's been samey, more or less. I also think the world building in it is a little weak. We got some in this, like, orc episode and everything, but it's all very sort of generic high fantasy. And then they also, I don't know. Maybe this is just because I'm me, but I would like, like, you know, it's like, oh, you know that harvesting golems is illegal. And it's like, why? Why is that illegal? Like, I want to know about all of this stuff, right? Because it tells us in, like, the description that eating monsters is, like, a taboo and everything. But, like, I guess I would like to see that explored because it sort of seems like just a relatively good source of food. Like, especially the golems. It's like, oh, they make perfect, super delicious food all the mm. time. You know, so I, I enjoy it. I think the characters are fun, but I don't think there's like a ton of depth to them. I think they're a little tropey. Not that that's bad, mind you. Just that, you know, I don't know. It's not wowing me, sure. I guess. Um, it is pretty. Trigger's doing a good job with all of that. Yeah, but to me, it's just, I guess, a little weaker than what I was hoping for. Okay. No, I I think you're not the only person who has thought that. I will say that what you are saying, the show does change. It does evolve. It's not every episode going forward is going to be cook monster of the week, essentially. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be like that. However, it is right now. I, I, I personally enjoy how it sets up sort of like the uniqueness of the dungeon with all these different like layers. I'm a fan of that in terms of like world building. I'm maybe not as high fantasy knowledge as you. So it's not too much for me. I've been really liking like that with the show. So I think your complaints are absolutely valid. I just want to give it. If other people are out there like that, it's not always going to be like that. I okay. just like, would you equate it to like a Kagi Asama where for some period of time, it's like, here are the skits, and the skits are, they're funny skits, but mm -hmm. they're the same skit, you know, and that's like, you know, the first eight to 12 sure. episodes or whatever. But then it's like, here's the overarching plot, and we still have these skits, but they're interlaced more, and they build on each other more, and all of that. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I guess, like, I don't because, like, you like, like, Food Wars, where, like, Food Wars is sort of, so I'm just going to compare Gourmet gour to Gourmet, where, like, yeah, you know, it's like, insert scene where they have to cook and then they move on to the next insert scene where they have to cook and so on and so forth. And, but like a lot of people like that show because like the cast is super fun and like they kind of do like other wacky things in between delicious and dungeon does that for me as well, where they're on this adventure as well. And then the end point of the episode is, you know, essentially cooking the meal. And like, I think Laos is, I love him as a character. I think he's so, I think he's so fun. I think he's so unique with like sort of just coming out of his shell of like this new experience in the dungeon, like this, your whole life, you wanted to be an adventurer. And yeah. You, no, you you're wanted right. to, you know, you want to like rescue the princess or find treasure and all this stuff. But for him, it's like, what if I actually just want to like cook food? Like I, I really enjoyed that with his character. So yeah, that, that's a good point. I, I will say, He's, he does not hit for me. I find him so boring. Sure. But, like, you're right on that. And, like, maybe it's because I don't care about cooking at all. Mm -hmm. Like, at all. Like, if I was rich, I'd just hire a chef. Like, it'd be, like, the first thing I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know? But, like, yeah. I, like, maybe that's... It's, like, a good point, right? Because he is sort of, like, finding his passion and getting to experience his passion. Mm -hmm. 
but I do think I guess like to me there's the there's the motivation of like trying to get his sister or whatever. Yep. And maybe maybe this is part of my issue that like that doesn't feel present. Why isn't this just a show about an adventuring party that's hanging out and having a good time and he wants to get into cooking and they meet their happy little, you know, dwarf friend or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I uh, well, I, I don't want to do any spoilers, but I, I okay. if you continue the show, I think you'll really I'll li- continue it. I yeah. do enjoy it. It's just not. Wow. I you know? think you will like the direction. It kind of switches from where it's at now because of the, okay. I will say it's not going to be like this the entire series. Like there is going to be shifts in tone and how they handle the dungeon going forward. It's not okay. just this. So I'm excited for that then. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I guess right now I have it at an eight. I think it's really fun. Every episode is just being better and better for me. Uh, I think that this probably has the possibility of being a nine. I do really want to see trigger, like go all out. Like, mm. I don't think there's been like a standout scene where they have the capability of doing so. So right now I think it's an eight. This I think the ceiling is a nine. Uh, looking forward to seeing where it goes from here. Yeah, so right now I would have it a seven. I can definitely see it going into an eight. Like I think it, like the characters are fun and stuff. And so if they decide to explore them, which it sounds like they will, and sort of flesh out the world a little bit more, which it sounds like they will, then I definitely think this moves up into eight territory for me. Right on. All right, so that is delicious and dungeon. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to shows that either Miles is watching by himself or shows that he dropped or planned to watch, and I'll do mine as well. So Miles, you go first. Yeah, so um, as Pete watches so many more shows than me, I only have one of these. Um, but that is Dr. Elise, the royal lady with the lamp. Um, so this is like a double isekai sort of thing where she gets isekai into Korea and then isekai back into her own life as a villainous. Hey. Um, <laughs> I, I think the show is a lot of fun. Uh, one of the negative reviews of it calls it a girl power trip fantasy. And I just want to say, like, yeah, I guess if the power fantasy is being a really cool doctor, then like, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, like, it, it definitely is, right? Like, she comes, she goes back to the past. She has all this knowledge as being, like, one of the world's f- foremost surgeon and, like, just schools everyone on, like, how to be a doctor and everything. But it's, like, fun. And it's a relatively unique way of doing like a power fantasy in my mind right so like we see so many like i kill everyone in one hit i'm level 999 or i got the worst power but it's actually like the best power yeah and, you, you know whatever um so this this is pretty cool as far as like those shows where you have like an isekai element and someone has like a skill from their you know previous life there's a lot of you know like pharmacists and there's one about a QA specialist coming at some point. You know, there's a lot of shows like this. I did, this, I think, does a pretty interesting job because she's reliving her life and she admits she was just a really bad person in her first go at it. Sure. And so to me, that adds a pretty interesting element because she's doing the healing thing in order to sort of repent for that. And then she's also aware of events that are going to happen, like plagues and things that will come and is trying to make changes to like, do things like that is this like the world's best show uh no it's a little silly at times you know a lot of the times the reason these surgeries can't happen in the past is because like the technology and stuff that exists they don't really delve into that yet maybe they will but it's fun i think it's like a good time the characters have pretty good charisma she's very likable but she also has like her evil side which is sort of fun to like flash back to. It doesn't like really come out in any way, but it, it's interesting. And I've been having a good time with it. I think I think it's a fun watch for me. It's probably like seven, eight okay. sort of thing, but it's definitely like a good sort of like a calm down show. Like I just want to watch something kind of fun. It's in that category for me. Right on. Uh, that is on my plan to watch. So I have added it to my like Crunchyroll watch list. So I will be getting around to it. Uh, for finally sure. talked you into it. <laughs> well, like you and Cosette and this Sora was, yeah, and like Stoney, all of us. I'm just like, <laughs> man, I, like I don't want to be left out. Like I want to watch this too. It, like it was on like my radar, but like some shows aren't just going to make the cut just based off my schedule. So 
Yeah, you did say this was like, I'll wait and see what people said about yep. it. And I think it's the first time one of us has said that. And then it's like, okay, let's put it on the list. Yes. And since <laughs> I've dropped two shows and possibly dropping a third, I can add a new one. So speaking of shows that I dropped, uh, the first one is Metallic Rouge. Had a lot of hopes for this. I thought the first episode was terrible. If to me, the story felt like I was watching episode two and episode one did not like where it was going. It's bones. It looks really nice. However, I just could not get, I could not like understand like anything that was happening with like the first episode. I mean, like I could, but like, I thought it was just like handled like really poorly. So, uh, threw that to the wayside. I also dropped, I actually started watching this, dropped it and then started watching it again, which is, um, chain soldier. It's terrible. It's so bad. It is. You want to see bad production <laughs> value? Like if you thought Fluffy Paradise was bad, yo, know, Chain Soldier has the one of the worst production values of the season. The plot is just the things happen in the story for like no sense, just to be relevant to the plot. So like it's one of those things where like, hey, we're gonna go on like a training arc, and then while we're training in the middle of nowhere, there's seven thousand evil people. Like, of course, there's seven thousand evil people. Why wouldn't there be? I don't like that. I don't like the whole girl, like her power that she, he gets from her, or she gets from him in return. He, ha she has to do like sexual things with him. And like, she doesn't want to do that. That doesn't really sit right with me. It's kind of just like, I think it's supposed to be like looked at as like kind of sexy where like <clears throat> she like, you know, it's like those things where it's like, you know, she said she doesn't want to do it, but she actually does. But in this sense, she doesn't want to do it and she really doesn't want to do it. But, you know, eventually it's like on the road where like she does after she falls in love with the main character. But like right now, that's not the case. So it's just really fucking weird. So I have it at like a four. I think I'm going to hate watch this. I think I really. Oh, my gonna... God. OK. Yeah. Um, I bumped it to a four because it reminds me a lot of like rent a girlfriend. It was a two. So I bumped it to a four. It reminds me of rent a girlfriend in the sense of like, you know, the main actually the main character in the show is like fine. Like, the okay. cast is actually, like, pretty fun. Like, I actually like them as, like, really fun characters. The blonde girl is, like, Yotsuba from Quince. Like, okay. It, she, I, mean, I think it's actually might be the same VA. It, it, it's, they're just, like, really fun characters. But, like, unfortunately, the show sucks ass. So, I can only do so much. So, that's that. The other shows that I'm watching that I would, like, actually recommend. Uh, the Weakest Tamer. I think it's been great. Uh, Ivy and Sora's relationship has been great. I have a soft spot for really cute slimes. And sort of her backstory of like being this character who, you know, you're, like you're in an environment. Essentially, she's like a witch, like a Salem witch. And that's oh, why she's cool. ostracized from her uh, village. Oh, so, she's not actually a witch. No, but the, the okay. village makes it portrays her as like a witch. Okay. That's, I, I thought and then sort of her like running away and her survivalist uh skills and stuff like that has been really nice i like that and also like a show that on paper sounds like the worst or one of the worst easter guys it's called the wrong way of using healing magic which my when i read it it gave me a redo of a healer vibes and i was like oh god not another one of these but it's not it's not that at all it, you know how you said like i was like you know i'm level one but i actually have like the most powerful skill set or whatever yeah like he has like an insanely powerful skill set but it's strictly for supporting magic like he gets his ass whooped in fights because he's a healer and so okay. like I, I do like that aspect of that but like it's a really fun silly isekai nothing to write home about but i do have it like a seven i think this might be like isekai pilled where i'm so used to having like fours and fives where if there's a glimpse of something nice, it's like, oh, this is a seven. It's not ass. So I would recommend that if you're into isekais. And then uh, continuing series with like season two, uh, Tsukamichi Moonlight Fantasy. I didn't really like the first couple episodes, but episode five was like pure fire out of nowhere. Ooh, okay. So big fan of where that's going now. I hope it continues with that. Uh, Tomozaki season two moved away from like, the gaming stuff and got into like some more like serious bullying aspects but now we're getting back into like the fun silly dating gaming stuff which i liked so much about season one i thought it was fine it just kind of seemed it was like four episodes i feel like it should have been like two but it is what it is it's it's fine if there's anything else oh if you want like an etchy show watch tales of wedding rings like it, it's so much better than chain soldier it's still bad but 
it's better than Shade Soldier. Watch that instead. And a show I've kind of been falling off of is Sasaki and Peeps. Uh, yeah. I really like the first three episodes. Uh, lately, it's been... I don't know what happened to like their music budget. It's a nickel now. It's, they, oh. they had like this fight scene, and they were playing like 90s techno. I'm like, this doesn't match the scene at all. Um, you know, you watch the solo leveling music where it's just like pure hype. Oh, I'm really getting into this because of this. It was the exact opposite of Sasaki and Peeps really falling off of that. I hope they can pick it back up because I think the story is actually pretty cool. Um, it's just been been bad. So uh, crossing my fingers out, it gets better. So that is all the shows that we're talking about for the new season. We're going to talk about two continuing shows just because we love them so much. The first one is Free Ren. Uh, Miles, I want to get your thoughts on sort of the Mage Exam arc so far that we've gotten anything that's been standing out to you um with like the second core of free run yeah i think i mean i one i think it's continued you know it's amazing you know production value and everything like that i think the mage exam arc is interesting because you know it's not exactly a tournament arc right but i think it has that sort of vibe mm-hmm. to me and what I think is impressive about Fryeran is the ability for its like the stakes of things to just sort of wax and wane in a pretty interesting way, right? Like we've dealt with like a demon army at this point, but like now we're trying to get a piece of paper so that we can get through a gate so that we can go where we're trying to go. Yep. And like there's conflict in that, you know, but it it's interesting. They've also, you know, set seeds you know, with their uh, their cleric leaving and stuff like that's going to come back. We've seen the elf monk again. That'll come back at some point, right? So we have these threads that are dangling, and we're creating some more during this exam arc. So I, I, I think it's doing a good job of giving us some entertaining things while introducing us to exciting new characters, and then also creating threads for us to follow as we continue on our journey north. I, I would agree. I th- I think the one thing that Free Run does better than like any show, maybe ever, just because I'm so hyped on this, is just like every episode is enjoyable in its own way. I think like how the dialogue is with Free Run and her and her party is fun, but then also when she has to like interact with new people, we see this in the Mage Arc where Free Run sort of gets paired up with two other um people that's not Stark and Fern, and how she is with them and like how that is and i'm a big fan of that but then we also get like the hype fights moments where you know free run versus denkin was fantastic like i i thought the production value with that was off the wall and it all kind of made sense i really am enjoying what i'm seeing so far and then this is leading into so that was the first test we're leading into the second test really interested to see how that gets broken up because that's more of like a free-for-all i believe uh if my mind recalls though uh, just just loving where free runs going it's holding strong as number one on mal um it, dr- it did drop to a 9.13 but then it's after, up. but at, yep but after the deck <laughs> it went back to a 9.14 so uh it ain't going anywhere I- i'm absolutely just loving every second of it and the newest episode the fern walk oh my god i love the fern walk it is i love how it just showcases <laughs> how she is just stoic quiet like she doesn't really like talk much like when she talks it's like four words like etchy and she says that like but this was just like it, it showed her in like a different light when she's like it's just like pure bliss and that's a live rent free in my head for the next month i i absolutely love the fur <laughs> walk so. anything else you want to say about free run before we move to our last show no i i mean you know, when we end the season, we're going to probably talk about it for an hour. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> it's a 10. It's uh, going in my top 10 of all time just because I already know it's going to happen. But I love number I love one. It's not going to be hope. number one, but it's I can hope. It, uh, it's great. <laughs> uh, OK, our last show that we're going to talk about is the Apothecary Diaries moving into its second core. Uh, we kind of saw Mau Mau essentially get like laid off, but then sort of rehired. And now she's uh, into this new role with Jinshi. And for me, I was a fan of part one, but not as high as other people. 
I'm loving this. this oh, there episode. we go. There I, we go. I am thoroughly enjoying what's going on um, now that like the relationships I think are more established and yep. the chemistry is there. I'm just, it's just so good. Fat Jinshi two episodes ago was just oh, it's so peak. That was such like a fun. You know, we can do some of the serious stuff within the the castle, but then also having Fat Jinshi is just great. Like. Everything that Mao Mao does, I'm just so intrigued by. And like her skill set of being this apothecary slash doctor slash Sherlock Holmes slash makeup artist is just all in one package. And she's fantastic. There's a reason why she won our best girl. Like she's she's the goat. Miles, Two years in a row, you heard it here first. There's probably a good chance uh, she repeats. <laughs> She's going to go Kansas City Chiefs on this. Uh, what What's your thoughts so far on this like second core of Apothecary? Yeah, I really like the second core. I think that you're right that by now they've, you know, a, a lot of shows that, that do this sort of stuff is like, I, you know, I don't know about you, but I sort of had to rewatch some scenes to sort of understand the dynamic of the palace initially when mm -hmm. she's moving in and she's like okay there's these three phases of the palace and there's these four courts and these girls are you know this lady's servant and i'm this lady's servant and she doesn't like her because of x y you know all that yep. but by now as you had said i sort of, like i have the politics and everything down for the most part and i think the payoff for like learning all of that like where maybe it might be a little draggy is like pretty high you know because you have all of these interesting dynamics you can play off of now yep. and i think that we're doing that and then mal mao's backstory is getting filled out a bit for her herself now um and that's going to be pretty interesting as well you know a lot of the characters like jenshi definitely has a lot of stuff going on right i think it's it's going to be interesting to see how it goes and one thing that i think we're missing from this uh, that I, I think we might get established soon here is sort of like a overarching plot point other than Mao Mao working at her job. You know what I mean? Like a sort of a, like an arc, sure. like a full arc. And so I, I kind of hope we get one of those, I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I wonder if she'll have like more freedom now in this role to like, cause like now she's like the newest episode. Oh, you haven't seen the newest episode, but like she's on vacation. I'm gonna put that in quotes. She says okay. she's on vacation. I think she gets like a day off or something like that. So I wonder if we'll get more like stuff outside of inside the palace and where that goes, but I'm intrigued and I'm really enjoying the second core more than the first. So really liking that but i think that wraps up winter so uh if you want to talk seasonals with us or anime with us you should join our discord that's in the description below uh if you want to support us the best way to do so is to like comment subscribe leave a review on whatever platform you're watching or listening to us on miles do you have any parting uh words for the people out there no i apologize if my voice uh ended up being bad i got sick literally while we were recording it just came on oh I got well, a head cold. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you go uh let you go take some day cool or night cool or whatever you're taking over there and we will head off <laughs> thank, thank you. you thank you so much to everybody's out there listening and we will see you next time peace bye-bye bye-bye